So last week on the show, we gave you Mike Evans and he scored three touchdowns. He was our highlight pick of the week. Pretty good there, but that doesn't matter because that was last week. It's a new week. Yes, it is. So who are the picks this week? Well, you just have to stick around because the DFS Line Star app pre-snap podcast starts right now. Five, eighty-five, ready. You're listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star. The top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now, here are your hosts, fantasy football experts, Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome, welcome to the pre-snap right here. On the line, so our app, it's me and it's Chris Meany and it's you and it's DFS and it's football, all my favorite things at one place. Chris Meany, I'm very excited because I always like to do a little work on my own and then I go check out the Line Star app and then I go move things back and forth. And if you haven't already, go out there and get that Line Star app. I'm telling you, get the optimizer, get everything on there, upgrade to the premium product, get all the great stuff by Nitro DFS and Greg Landry and all the dudes over there doing great work. And let me tell you something. It's got all of my favorite players at the top of their optimizer board. I couldn't believe it. I went there. I made up lineup last night that I love for the millionaire maker. I think this is it. I think for my birthday this week, I win the Millie maker. What do you think? Oh, baby. What a birthday gift. And you deserve it. Yes. Let's uh, give you a shout out. A happy birthday to you, my friend. And it's always a good feeling when you go to the line star app and guys that you like, because this is what I do first. I try to highlight the guys with like my rankings, my tiers before I even look at prices on DraftKings or FanDuel or before you even look at some of the data that LineStar has to offer. And then I have it set. And then when you go there and you see, whoo, yes, they like it. So it backs it up. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's, it it's makes you feel warm feeling. and fuzzy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's about feeling warm and fuzzy. And that's what I want to feel. And Chris and I will get our picks later on. Our touchdown calls were pretty good last week. I had four. Chris pretty had good. two, right? <laughs> well, you know, we, and I mean, people, you, you, you called a guy who had three touchdowns. I did. I did. I called a guy who had three touchdowns. Pretty and then good. Darren Jones had two. Yes. And then you had you had two also, did you not? No, I had one. You had and one. And I right. think it was Delvin Cook. Yeah. There's going to be plenty of weeks where you carry me over the goal line and it's weeks where I carry you. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, right. As long as somebody gets merch, it's all good. That's right. Well, I'm, let me tell you, man, you, you better retweet because when that clip comes out, you go and retweet the hell out of that thing and you like it and you send it everywhere because we're going to do that contest again. So if you retweet that, we will uh, get you merch, whoever. So basically, Chris or myself is like your champion whoever scores the most touchdowns between a wide receiver and a, and a running back that we pick. So uh, let me tell you, man, my people are dripping in merch right now. They got <laughs> line star underwear. They got line star toothbrushes. They got line star everything. It's amazing. They, their car has line star on it. It's crazy. It's good stuff. It sounds like a sweet car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get after it. And we'll talk about some of these guys that uh, the line star app likes so much as well, but uh, let's start. At the one o'clock games, because, you know, we already talked about Monday, Thursday. So Thursday is happening tonight, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about the Titans and the Falcons. And I want to start here because one of my favorite running backs this week is the man in Tennessee. Now they're traveling over there to Atlanta. And there's one thing I know about the Falcons, Chris. And is if you watch the Falcons play the last couple of years, they're not big on tackling. They're not the team that likes to really get in front of somebody and tackle. It's not their MO, which is hilarious because Dan Quinn is supposed to be their defensive guy coach. Yeah, Dan Quinn's useless, I think. (laughs) Well, it's just hilarious to me because when you watch them arm tackle guys constantly, (laughs) I'm just like, meh. Like, their half-assed effort, that is not going to cut it, okay, this week against my man Derrick Henry. And I'm talking about ROI guys, and I'm talking about Derrick Henry at 6,300 on DK. On FanDuel, I absolutely love him at 7K. On a week like you kind of were saying, no more Saquon. Um, you know, you've got Alvin Kamara in the late slate, Ezekiel Elliott in the late slate. So it's 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 weird because they're, you know, in the 8 o'clock game, you really are kind of, it's McCaffrey and everybody else. So you're kind of searching here. And I think it's a fascinating opportunity. And I think when you're looking at the board, you know that the Titans are not going to throw the ball a ton. It's going to be the Derrick Henry show. And this is a team that doesn't like to tackle. So I'm all in here, dude. Yeah, no Kanu, he'll, Neil either, who is, uh, he's done for the year, and he's arguably their best defensive player. He's had some bad luck over the past couple of years, and 
Absolutely. I mean, that's Tennessee's game plan. I like it. I love the price range. And you're right about the running backs. It's just, it is a weird week for, I mean, a lot of the studs are, are, are not playing. And even guys like Monday night, even James Conner and Joe Mixon, who have been disappointing, you want to take some shots of them in decent matchups. You can't do it on the main slate. So yeah, I like it. I like the call a lot. He's going to touch the ball a ton. Deion Lewis is not involved in the offense and there's no, nobody else really is either. No, no pass catchers. Corey Davis is invisible. Like Delaney Walker is the only guy and he's, he's just been underwhelming as well recently. So yeah, like the call. And on All the right. other side, on yeah, the other side, I, I think it's just Julio. I like Julio. I mean, obviously, like, I mean, there's nothing naked you can say about Julio. Julio. He's scoring Julio touchdowns with Matt Ryan. No, I think I think just naked Julio. Uh, I, I hashtag think, naked Julio. Yeah, okay. it's it, for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, Matt <laughs> no, no, Ryan it is sense, better think, at home. He's a little expensive too. You know, when you yeah. look at some of the other quarterbacks like Wilson, like Philip Rivers. Oh, it's kind of a tough sell to go all the way up there for me. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not in love with that. Um, let's go to Daniel Jones, who had a very good first effort. He was the guy we talked about on Monday on the recap show about how good he was out of the gate. Tough assignment on the road, uh, making your debut. And the guy crushed it. Now, unfortunately, um, Saquon Barkley is not going to be there. But to me, I think you can run Daniel Jones out there at 73. I don't think it's a terrible price on FanDuel. I think Evan Ingram is grossly underpriced at 68. I really do. He's 57 on DraftKings, 68 on FanDuel. And considering there's no Saquon, considering we're down to Wayne Gallman, and basically it's it's Sterling Shepard out of the slot and it's Evan Ingram and these quick passes, I think Evan Ingram is very high on my list this week of must-start guys, whether it be cash or tournaments, because I think it plays in both. Yeah, love Ingram, love Shepard, and I like Jones a lot, and you know, you know, our boy Jake Seeley made a little bet with me if Jones had finished as a top-five quarterback this week, he was going to order the jersey, and I think he may have to. And Whoa. there's a lot of buzz around him this week. Fanshare has him as the highest projected quarterback, which was a little surprising, but at the same time, all the buzz with him after his first game. I know it was the Buccaneers secondary, but this one in Washington is is not great either. We're talking about a total that's flirting with 50 now between these two teams, and it's because of the defense. I mean, they're both one and two in, in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. They're both top five in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Jones just proved, I mean, he can run around a little bit. I know Barkley is not there, and I think that's why you like Ingram and I like Shepard because the target share is very thin between those two guys. Like, those are the guys. And Jones showed like it's a different offense. What we talked about a Monday show, there's some zone reads, there's some bootlegs. He ran a couple in himself. He's not highly priced. So I think there's going to be some points scored in this game because both defenses are not great. I- I'm not talking about rolling out case Keenum, but Jones is an option for sure. If you want to yeah. fade him in tournaments because he's going to be so highly owned fine. But I honestly feel like you could even play him in cash because of his price. And in terms of the other side of this one, McLaren has been brilliant. I mean, brilliant. If, the Amazing. fact that he's just 45 and the Giants defense crazy sucks. on DK, that's a tremendous value. 63 on FanDuel. Okay. Value and Richardson at 47 is not a terrible value either. Uh, so you're really getting a discount on Richardson on FanDuel. If you're looking for, you know, one of those, like we like to call them here on the show, responsible punt plays where it helps you build lineups. So there'd be cash or tournaments. I think Richardson and McLaren are both those guys. Richardson, especially on the FanDuel side, is kind of crazy. Actually, on DK, too, for Richardson, DK. 37. He's the guy that I – yeah, he he's in a, a few of my lineups. He's, he's I feel like – just like last last week with Nelson Aguilar, although you're not going to get the chalk, but Aguilar is fine. He's going to have some usage in this game, some volume. I'm sure they're going to want to run AP, give him a few more touches. Game script wasn't in his favor last week, but AP doesn't have much to offer anymore at this point. Like, he's Keenum's going to have to throw the ball. Yeah, absolutely. And look, they're not making that change to Haskins this week or next week because no. he's not even running with the. the f- he's not even running with the. He's like on the scout team. No, look, you could sir. Everybody, get to the calendar and circle it. Okay, it's the thirteenth of October because this week they're playing a division opponent, so they're going to try to win. And then when they lose, or if they lose, the next week they're going to definitely lose when they play the Patriots. You're not going to yeah. throw Haskins, a rookie, to the Patriots defense. No. That's, that's death. So the 13th, guess who they're playing? The Miami Dolphins. Woo, woo. Yeah, it seems like a good date, but just like I want to hear him now running with like second team offense and like not Colt McCoy. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's You'll been some that reports that he's not even close. Yeah, it's it's time. You'll hear that next week because there's also a chance, you know, Case Keenum could get knocked out of a game against the Patriots. <laughs> the way that defense has been playing, man. They've been oh, ferocious. Man. You know, they haven't given up a touchdown since the AFC Championship game. It feels like, yeah, I mean, it's all that's over. January. <laughs> yeah, we're going on a year here. Who knows? Like with their schedule as well, I know it gets a little bit tougher. They got a matchup against KC, but that's not like given up an offensive touchdown since January. That's and I don't know if it's going to happen this weekend. Uh, you know what? It might not. 
I think I think they will. I I think the Bills are Bills are going to play them tough, but we'll find they're gonna out. They're going to play them tough, but I don't know if they're going to get an offensive touchdown. Well, well, let's let's go to the let's let's go talk about the Chargers first, then we'll get into that Bills game. We'll save that for later. So uh, obviously the Dolphins, we're not playing anyone there. I don't care. Don't don't get stopped. Just shh. If you just had a split second of mental illness where you decided you wanted to play some of the Dolphins, just stop it. Okay, it's even if it works, it's not right. <laughs> okay, there's no so point. Don't, yeah, there's no point. Don't do that. But on the other side of this one, um, the Chargers are going to be super chalk, super super chalky. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It wasn't wrong last week. Um, Eckler is going to be 8K over on uh, DraftKings on FanDuel. He's a little bit cheaper. He's actually a pretty good value on FanDuel, surprisingly so. Um, at 81, I think is actually pretty decent considering this matchup. Keenan Allen's the guy I want to talk about though because he's 81 over on FanDuel as well, 76 on DK. This is another 14, you know, 14 receptions for 115 yards kind of a game. Like this is, this just reeks of a huge game for Keenan Allen, but I'm actually going to fade away just a little from this one only because of the travel for the chargers and Melvin Gordon coming back. And I don't know how much Justin Jackson is going to play in this one. A lot of people love him this week and they want to play him as a flex because Pollard put up a hundred yards. Now just because Pollard put up a hundred yards doesn't mean every backup running back's going to, I think that's a trap. I'm not fading away from this one completely. Rivers and Allen, I'm all over. If you want to play Eckler, okay, I'm fine. I've got other guys I like better. What's your approach with the Chargers? Are you all in? Because I'm in on the defense too. I have, to, in all fairness, I'm still in on that. Yeah, I like the defense as well. Um, I, I, I I like New England a little bit more. Like I said, to to spend down a little bit because uh, the Chargers are obviously up at the top of the board. You know, a lot of what you said makes sense. There's a lot of buzz about Justin Jackson. He, I'm completely fading him. There's no chance I'm playing him. If he falls in the end zone twice, then so be it. I mean, I'd just, I'd be so crushed if I lost big time money because I played Justin Jackson. And just no thanks. I'm not going to go there. But I do like Austin Eckler, and because Jackson's getting so much buzz, Gordon's not going to play this week. But this may be the last time to really use Austin Eckler at this price. I mean, Gordon, maybe he comes back slow. They're going to use him. Eckler's still going to have a role when when Gordon comes back. But, but Eckler's been getting like 20 touches in this offense, and they are heavily favored. They probably will be a little sluggish if you pick them in Survivor. I'm not even going to pick them in Survivor because, it's like you said, it's a West Coast team, team going to the East Coast playing a 1 o'clock game. That's a 10 o'clock in the morning game for them. It's, it's certainly possible that they come out of the gate really like sluggish. But there are two players in here, and it's Keenan and Allen, like you mentioned, leading wideouts in every category out there. And then Eckler, I'm, in, I'm involved. I'm interested. And you mentioned Rivers. Sure. Defense. Absolutely. But I'm not getting cute with anybody else. Like if you've watched Travis Benjamin, he just hasn't looked good at all. He's dropping passes. He looks brutal. Like it's not a pun play that I want to take. And Justin Jackson, I'm just I'm not going there. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. All right, let's move on to the Colts. Now, at this point in time, it's probably unlikely T.Y. Hilton plays. I think we can all agree. There's just right. no reason for it. Why push him? Why why injure a quad? That would be a horrendously stupid idea because that could be an awful, awful injury. They can beat the Raiders. I'm sorry. They can. But from a fantasy perspective, this one gets very tricky. I absolutely love Marla Mack this week. 61 on DK. 73 on FanDuel. The Line Star app on FanDuel loves him too. He's number two behind my boy Derrick Henry. So when I had those guys paired together and then I go over and look at the optimizer and they were the top two. Again, warm and fuzzy feeling there. Now, the other question is, can we take a shot somewhere else? Are we taking a shot on Pascal at 54? Are we taking a shot at, um, I don't know, maybe a, a Jack Doyle? Are you taking a shot at a Deion Kane, who had a ton of snaps last week? Not a ton of targets, but a ton of snaps. He was on the field a ton. Or a Paris Campbell. Is, is there somebody you're taking a shot at here? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to do Mac. I get it, because you're right. The pass is, I mean, T.Y. with out of this game and I don't think he's going to play either but I think they're just going to go I think it's going to funnel the target to the tight ends I think it's going to be Doyle and Ebron I, th- I could see one of those two having the touchdown if I had to choose one it would be Ebron but I think they're just going to use a lot of Mac they play at a slow pace Jacoby Brissett's not taking a lot of shots downfield he's just being cautious with his throws and and it's working for them I mean they're relying on the offensive line and and the run game Mac is right he's number one in touches and carries so he's I think he's going to continue to get a lot of work Maybe he catches a couple balls out of the backfield now with T.Y. out. So I think Mac is the guy that I would play in both spots, cash in tournaments, and I'm I'm just staying away. And I'm not even not even really interested on the other side, like Waller, and that's that's it. Yeah, Waller at 67 is good, but again, then Ingram's at 68. Uh, wouldn't you rather have Ingram for a hundred yes, bucks? Yes, absolutely, more? for sure. I mean, just for the touchdown yeah. upside of Ingram and for the targets. I mean, not not that. I mean, that's not fair because Waller's gotten a ton of targets. But yeah, I don't for know. The man. Touchdown upside and the and the points. Yeah, Giants have one of the highest team implied totals. It's, it's crazy to think about, but 
it's going to be a high scoring game there. I it think. is the, Gi- the and the Giants stadium is going to be rocking. I'm telling oh, you right yeah. now, man, they're good. They're going to be hyped up. They haven't had a lot to cheer for over the last decade. Right. <laughs> for the most since that last Super Bowl. They really haven't. They've, they've not been good. So this is huge for them. And Absolutely. to have looking ahead as an organization. And when New York fans are hyped up, man, that makes it a tough place to play. So let's go over to uh, Houston, where we're going to have the Carolina Panthers and our boy, Mr. Kyle Allen, making another start. This is another one on the road. So another tall order for him. Uh, you forget all the running backs uh, for me in, in this one on the Texan side. Uh, I'm not going to go buy into what happened last week on Aikens, too. I know a ton of people are going to want to do that because it's cheap. Maybe you get lucky. All I know is I have never seen, I mean, like, CJ Fedorovich, maybe. Like, I'm trying to think of a tight end in Houston that I can think of. Just just think of. Yeah, that, CJ's the only guy because Adam is in a dynasty league, like, in a 16th right? I mean, game, really. Like, it's a disaster. Years ago. Yeah. It's, you now, it's if you want to be different, bad. you can go throw out uh, Hopkins and Watson today because – you know that that's fine it's going to be different there's going to be a lot of rivers and keenan allen pairings there's going to be a lot of lockett and wilson which we'll talk about later but if to be different it's not a terrible one at all uh the other thing i would point out too is kenny stills has been good as a lineup builder on dk he's just 42 just 54 over on FanDuel. so um that that's about all for here and look kyle allen came in was great i think this is a little bit tougher of a matchup <laughs> than arizona yeah. Yeah. so I'm going to stay away from this one and I'm going to fade McCaffrey too, uh, just because. So what's your thoughts on this? One? I mean, in cash, you can still play McCaffrey, but in tournaments, I just think it's too hard this week to afford him with all that charger stuff going on with the dolphins this week. Yeah, this game really isn't on my radar and it's probably, maybe it's a mistake. I think you brought up a good point with Watson and Hopkins. We know what those two can do and they came off a pretty disappointing game, especially Hopkins last week. I think there was a question you and I got, it was like Hopkins or Keenan Allen. And it was like, you know, Keenan Allen, I think, You know, a lot of people are thinking that way, but we know what Hopkins can do. So after a quiet game, recency bias is certainly a thing. So I don't mind that as a contrarian stack. And I think it will be one that that goes low on. On the other side, I would fade Greg Olson. I think last week was just the matchup against Arizona. We'll get there when we talk about Seattle. They just really have struggled against tight ends. I'm sure Greg Olson is going to be a player for Keenan or for Kyle Allen in this offense. But I, I don't expect that type of performance again. So really, yeah, everything on the Carolina side, not not totally interested in McCaffrey coming off that big game. Yeah, he's fine to play in cash, but uh, I'm I'm kind of spent it down at running back this yeah. week. Yeah, and with the and with the wide receivers too, it's kind of like you know, it's it's like it's you, not that it you brought up a good point with Stills. I think Stills is close. Like you could take a shot on Fuller. We haven't seen that big game yet from him. No. We know that what he's done, it's it's it is possible. Like he's he is going to have a game soon where he he goes off for a hundred in the score. Right. Like that's going to happen. Right. Maybe with now like is the time catches. to do it potentially. Yeah, you're right. With, <laughs> That's with, what he does. With but four, even like Samuel pitches. and DJ Moore, like they were very – Allen was very good at executing last week. I think it's going to be a little bit harder this week to do it. Yeah. But it's not impossible. It's going to be low-owned. That's the only plus I could say. It's a multi-entry kind of a play. Yeah. I don't think it's a single-entry thing you want to get. If you're, it's, it's, if you're trying to get some differential, this could be a game to jump into that I don't think a lot of people really care too much about this week. Let's talk about another one here, Kansas City Chiefs. We always care about them. Mahomes is top of the board. Not a week I want to go to the top of the board for Mahomes. I'm going to try to avoid that because there's a lot of other quarterbacks I think this week you can roll out there and be very happy with. Hardman is 65 over on uh, FanDuel. On DK, he's just 51. Uh, Robinson's 52 on DK. On FanDuel, uh, the price is uh, pretty cheap as well there. It's just uh, if it would just fly up there and it's gone. Anyway, uh, looking at this I one. I do know. I know. Robinson on FanDuel is 6 7 and. Um... Hardman's six five. They're all right in I that hit same the button range. and in my sausage fingers, I, I moved it and all of a sudden now and then it just disappeared. <laughs> That's what happens. This is what happens when you're on your third show of the day, too. You get a little punchy. But anyway, um, the Chiefs will be the Chiefs. You know, I think what's more important is trying to break down the Lions here a little bit. And I think this is a good opportunity for Carry on Johnson to have one of his first big games of the year. He's been kind of ugly and quiet. The stats have shown up, but not in a in bunches like you want. I think that changes against this defense this week. What say you, Chris Meany? Yeah, I mean, C.J. Anderson's no longer around there, so he he got 20 touches in the offense last week. I mean, he only had 36 yards on the ground, but the one thing that the Eagles' defense does well is they can stop the run. So I wouldn't take too much stock into last week's performance. I would just, again, the big takeaway is 21 touches in that offense going up against the Chiefs' defense. 
top six in the league, the six most rushing yards allowed. Because teams, they that's what they want to do. They want to go at a slow pace. They want to try that and run the football so Mahomes is off the field. It's just Mahomes marches down the field the other way so quickly that it forces the other team to throw the ball. doesn't mean Carrion can't have a few grabs in this game. I certainly think he could. And he's at a really good price. You know, we, there's that range on DraftKings where all those backs are in that mid-six that we've talked about, like Henry and Mack and another one we'll get to. But you have to go down and scroll down a little bit lower and to see exactly where carry on Johnson is. So yeah, I carry like, at 65 on FanDuel, And I think that's a really good, uh, there's touchdown upside there this week. I think it's a decent flex play for sure. And 54 on DK. So it, it's, yeah. it's not bad. And I got burned by Galladay last week. I'm going to go back to him. I think Marvin Jones again. I think these guys are, at the same time as saying they want to run the football with carry on, they are going to be forced to throw the ball on Stafford. So I think Stafford is certainly interesting. I think you can pair him up with carry on. Actually, if you get yourself a receiving touchdown, but many not, you may not think then boom you i think you're ahead of the curve and that's just like a multi-entry tournament option or a strategy that you could take but i also want to say that i do agree with you joe on the quarterbacks like no need to really spend up on patrick mahomes but i think a lot of people are are thinking that it was in a tournament last week where he was like six percent owned like if you're going to get mahomes six percent owned i think you take one shot again you're playing multiple lineups there's enough value to to make it work he does this he hasn't even hit his ceiling yet uh, I don't oh, know no. if Stafford I could make know if that on happen the road against Detroit. Like I think Detroit this is his wants... first dome game of his career in the NFL. Yeah, <laughs> but Detroit, to watch. Detroit kind of want makes you want to play down to their level. They're yeah, one of those kind I see of that. teams. They, yeah. they, they, you know, Patricia wasn't very. We've seen that said, all year. Actually, I said this yeah. on the radio show today too. I was like, you know, Patricia it wasn't very popular right away. I think it's because he was expecting more effort. And this year, you're seeing a lot more effort out of the Lions, the guys that are still there. And look, maybe maybe there's a little contrarian love for uh, Matt Stafford in this game, too, if, they're, yeah, if they get sure. behind, Agreed. which they probably will be. Yes. Uh, and that means Galladay and maybe even Amendola, too, because in the slot against, uh, you know, Fuller there, that's 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 where you want to be. But there's definitely something there. And I'll tell you what, he was one of the uh, lines, one of our upsets. Uh, if you're wagering, you should definitely subscribe to the pre-snap because the wagering show comes out Friday with Mike Randall and myself and. He is two for three, and I am three for three on the upset specials. It was the Bills week one to win outright and cover. They did. Then the Detroit Lions to uh, cover against the Chargers and win outright. They did. And last week, I picked the Texans to (laughs) cover and win outright, and they did. So it was a good day (laughs) all the way around there. Uh, But look, look, here we are. If you want to know what it is this week, you're just going to have to listen to tomorrow's show. So uh, (laughs) let's get over to the next one. Let's the Cleveland Browns, which man, they are on the brink of, of one and three, aren't they, Chris? Let's be honest. Yeah, for sure. The brink. This is it. I do expect a, a, a desperate team this week, a divisional matchup. You know, if, if they could come out of Baltimore with a win, they should be feeling pretty good about themselves getting that W against a division rival who is looking real good right now in the Baltimore Ravens. But again, I just don't see it. I think you can pass on the Ravens, but what, what has been the issue with Cleveland is, yeah, of course, the play calling. I said this last week, getting the plays in just too late. And I was more worried about that Jets game than the Titans game because I thought they should have steamrolled the Jets and they just didn't really do anything on offense to take that big play away from Beckham. And it was it was just nothing. So maybe you try Maybe they try to lean on Chubb a little bit, but it is tough to run in this Ravens defense. I mean, top two in the league against the run. So and they can't hold they can't hold the pressure. Right. It's the offensive line has not been good. So Cleveland's completely off my radar. You want to be ultra contrarian? Sure. But there's no need for it. I'm I, on the other side. I think Marquise Brown is definitely in play. Mark Andrews again didn't practice today with a foot. I know he played last week. He dealt through that, but that was his one down game. Maybe he really is dealing with something. So I think you know Lamar is probably going to take a couple shots downfield. Keep an eye on Denzel Ward. Maybe he doesn't play, but this game is. I think this is going to be a low scoring affair personally. Really? Wow, that'd be fascinating yeah. to see if this was like a grind because the Ravens are not the old Ravens. I think we can all attest to that in terms of defense. This is not the same Ravens team. I keep trying to tell everybody, wake everybody up to this fact because they're they're just not. They no Suggs, no Mosley. It's just it's a different group. It's still a relatively young group too. It wouldn't shock me, you know. Again, if you're multi entry to have a Baker Mayfield Odell Beckham pairing because you know it's all going to be there. Like yeah. You just know it's it's and no it's one's going to be, be on that. No one's going to be on that. And no one's going to be on it this week against the Ravens because they still have this notion in their head of what the Ravens used to be. And they're just not that team anymore. You're right. It's and look, I, I agree. These individual games get tricky. Probably going to be close. I'm going to probably stay away from it. But if you're looking to get to dance a little with somebody who's um, desperate times, it, it's Baker Mayfield and Odell because it's getting desperate there. Uh, the Patriots are not getting desperate. They look all right. 
Uh, Patriots at Bills in this one. James White will be back and healthy for this one. He was out last week. Uh, he was healthy, but he was there to uh, bring in his new son to the world. And they were like, hey, don't worry about it, James. It's the Dolphins. We got this. Yeah, uh, excuse yeah. me, it was the Jets. What am I saying? It we doesn't still, matter. We still, <laughs> still got, got it, it anyway. Yeah. It's the Jets. We got it. And um, look, in this one, I think they're going to be real competitive. The Buffalo Bills are going to get up to play the Pats because they always do. Last year, this game was very tight in the first half. Patriots make adjustments, and of course, they then pull away. That's what they're going to do, I think, in this one, too. So this is another game from a DFS standpoint. I kind of stay away from, I think those corners and those safeties are going to give hell to Josh Gordon. I really do. I think they actually match up pretty well with him. So I think a lot of Dorsett in this game because Dorsett's going to be open a ton because somebody's got to be open. It's going to be Dorsett. And I don't think you can feel good about Sony Michelle so far this year. I don't think you can feel good about Burkhead. We haven't had a big James White game. So I'm kind of fading away from this group. And look, that that defense has played so well. Uh, God bless Josh Allen. I love the Bills the first couple weeks of the season. This week, uh, I'm out. Uh, I'm out altogether on the Bills. Yeah, I mean, they rank first in sacks, picks, points allowed, only five per game. And, and Allen has three picks himself, a couple fumbles. So I think it's. I think this game is going to be a grind. I'm, I'm really not interested in, in any aspects of it besides the Patriots' defense, to be honest with you. I mean, it looks like Edelman's going to play, so that's that's positive. I mean, I think he, he'll he probably come away with the most catches in this game, or, or James White. I think that's – you're going to probably have to just do quick throws with the Bills. I mean – Again, I have a ton of respect for their defense in Buffalo. This is going to be a very entertaining game to watch. I see it as a, as a low scoring game, and and I don't know how much success Buffalo is going to be able to have because Josh or um, John Brown is just going to be taken away. That's obvious, and there's just going to be no other really uh, you know passing attack like maybe a bunch of dump offs again to to Cole Beasley if possible. I think Allen's going to be just running around all day, so maybe he'll be okay. maybe he'll come on the safe floor. I just don't feel like there's going to be a lot of touchdowns scored in this game, so. It's a complete pass for me. I can't even touch any of the backs. I think you're right about Michelle. Does not look good. I think it, I think it's like, what, 45 carries? He's broken one tackle. Like, he just doesn't look good. Uh, and I think Rex Burkhead is trending up, but I just don't have enough confidence to play him. Not in this. No, I don't. Play. I don't think you can. You can because you just don't know. That's the problem. The consistency is you just don't know. Uh, the one thing I do know is going to be some points in this Bucks rams game. Okay? Because we've seen this happen last year where – you know, we think it's going to be something and then the Rams end up in a shootout, <laughs> you know, it happened with the Vikings last year. It happened with New Orleans last year. To me, this is going to be one of those games and this might be the sneaky point total of the week. It really could be. We'll get into more of that tomorrow from the betting standpoint, but uh, you got to love Cooper Cup. Obviously, in this one, I think in the slot is a great opportunity against that Bucks defense for sure. Uh, it's not that Woods and Cooks aren't in play. I think they are. I just like Cup in terms of return on investment. My question to you is. Todd Gurley's now 6,800. We've heard some rumblings at 7K now on DK that it's time to start, you know, feeding the ball to Todd Gurley. Are we going to buy into that? And if they do, will we get the Todd Gurley game that's possible? I mean, it is possible. Uh, he does have two double-digit scoring performances. It's just that Todd Gurley of old, I think, is is gone. You're just, you're just not going to see it. It's very clear that he's that they're limiting his usage. It's, it's certainly clear. Now you're, you're seeing it all the talk in the off season. It's, it was just noise. I mean, this is somebody who touched the ball 20 plus times. He's got four catches through three games. He had at least three catches in double digit games last season. It's so it's, it's very clear. There was a, a point in the game. I think when they came onto the field in the second half where he was on the sidelines, he was just sitting down for the whole half. Like, why isn't he starting? It's just not the same usage. So, the price has dropped down enough where you can take some shots in them in tournaments for sure. Like absolutely. But I'm more interested in the passing attack. And I know that everybody is, is just crapping on golf right now. And and if you look at the top quarterbacks on DraftKings in terms of price, like everybody, like you see the two at the top, Mahomes and Jackson, 30, 30 DK points per game, Brady, Watson, twenties, rivers, Wilson, twenties, Murray, 20, Ryan, 25, you get point. Goff is in the middle priced pretty high. The fifth highest priced quarterback on DraftKings but I'd like him at home. I know he's been a little bit different this year without Gurley, but last year at home, he averaged 342 yards per game, a touchdown to interception ratio, 22 to three on the road. It was 10 to nine, only 240 yards passing. He's much yeah, better. That's at another home. one too, but the, you want to talk about Mahomes. This is not a good Mahomes pay up week. Golf, no. yeah. Rivers, Wilson, Contrary even Daniel Goff Jones. Too. I don't think Goff's going to be owned. I, I agree. It's been a bad run for him. I totally, yeah. I a hundred percent agree with you. I don't think enough people are talking about this. Bogman and I on black book podcast talked about it uh, this morning. 
And dude, I, I think so too. I think people are sleeping on this big time and I think it's going to come around. Look on the other side of this one is usual suspects. It's, it's good one. And it's Evans and yeah. you take a shot, but I mean, Winston, I don't feel good about Winston every week. No. Last week was so prolific because of how I bad like, the giants are. I do like That's, the Rams D. I think they'll dial up some pressure on Winston and the line's not good. So it could be, it could be issues. I think this is a back to a Godwin week, you know, it was Evans. Godwin. I think it goes, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then now Evans is more expensive than Godwin, which, which should have been the case anyways. We jumped on that low price with Evans, but I think you go the other way. I think Godwin's in play. All right. So uh, here we go. This was, this to me is going to be the sneaky big scoring game of the week. Seattle on the road in Arizona. I think you're going to see a little laser light show with these guys. I really do. Just points everywhere. Fitzgerald, Kyler Murray, Christian Kirk, and a ton, a ton of Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett. Give me all the Tyler Lockett. He's just 66 on FanDuel. How is that possible with the volume he's getting? Yeah, no, it's run, yeah. run yeah. to FanDuel and go pick him up. On DK, he's 63. Uh, on FanDuel, he's 66. That is just criminally low. Okay. Yeah. There's no, there's nobody here to stop him. He's going to have a double digit targets again in this one. I don't care. They don't have the personnel. Wilson and Lockett's my favorite pairing of, of the week because more the thing with golf where I struggle is who's the pairing? Is it Woods? Is it Cup? Mm, is it Cooks yeah. this week? And that's always that's always tough. Sometimes you got to go with two, and yeah. you hope that you pick them right. For me, dude, it's no brainer here. I know it is. It's Tyler Lockett, and it's all day. So that's how I feel. But I think this one this has like potential to be like a sixty over to me. Yeah, it could be a lot of points for sure scored in this game. And you're right. Yeah, if you're going to pair it up, I mean, you don't have to pair anybody up with, with Goff. If you're going to do it, it would be Cup. But yeah, if if you want a, a strong stack, this is certainly one of them. You had 26 targets for Lockett in the last two games. Yeah, absolutely. And with all the, the run concern, I actually like Chris Carson in this matchup I, to bounce back. I Keep an eye on Penny if he doesn't play. All reports, like Pete Carroll's pretty honest with his reports. To, to you know, he, There's a lot of coaches out there that just – talk crap but he'll give it you to mean you like straight. matt lafleur and Doug peterson <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they'll give it to you straight and they do believe in carson he's never really fumbled before it's been a fumble in every single game now and there is that threat of playing him and him fumbling and then him hitting the bench like there's a lot of risk there so i think his ownership will drop down even more plus everybody was on him last week i wasn't necessarily on him myself but it, his ownership was pretty high and i was surprised and he let a lot of people down so people are not going to go back to that I think him and Lockett are definitely in play. Yeah. And on the flip side, like we're just talking about, if that does happen where the run game is non-existent, you're going to see what you saw last week. Russell runs a couple in. He throws it 50 plus times. You know, Arizona wants to play at a fast pace. So yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you here. I think there's going to be some points. I think even D- DK Metcalf is in play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I definitely well, Will so. Disley is all obviously in play. Well, the whole He's going to be super is- chalky though. You know what? The whole, th- you know, I'll still take Ingram. I'll pay up for Ingram there. Yeah. See, I'm going to pay up for targets this week. I'm paying up for all the targets I can get this week. I don't want to limit myself with guys like Disley, even though he's been very good. I don't want to, I want to make sure that I'm giving myself a big floor this week because I think there's going to be some big point totals. So I want a big floor on some of those pay- players. And this game to me, I just like, I, you make a great point about Carson too. He's, he's playing for his job right now, I think, a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Like, Penny's right yeah, 100% there. 100% he is. And as soon as he's healthy, if this is another, if he puts the ball on the ground one more time, man, that's it. Like, that's he's, it. he's that's toasty. It. Yeah. Uh, this next game, actually, look, I'll be honest. The next two games I got no love for. Vikings at Bears, I want nothing to do with. I'm not paying up for Dalvin Cook against the Bears. Good for you if you do. Contrarian, God bless you. I hope it works. I want nothing to do with the Bears offense right now. I don't care. I can't. No, no, right. nothing, yeah, yeah. anything for you here. I'm, I'm a hard pass in this one. Uh, yeah, no, a hard pass as well. I will have one chair cooked just because of the touches and usage and people will be off him, but yeah, he's not usually I'll have like 80% cook. Like that's not going to be the case this week. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is the Jaguars and Broncos, which again, I, I have no love for this one too. I do know line star likes Manuel Sanders, especially with Jalen Ramsey out of this game. Yeah, he's super cheap. He's super cheap. I support that. I support Cortland Sutton to, as you know, just taking shots with some guys who are discounted, who have talent. But my problem is they're just so run heavy. And yeah. oh, that's yeah. that again, I'm, I'm limiting my opportunities, which means the margin of error is so thin. Like they've got to be good every time they touch the ball. And I'm just looking at the rest of the board and there's a lot of affordable volume out there. And I want to make sure that I get as mo- much of it as I can. I really yeah, you're, you're just capping your upside here because these are two just low scoring games 
And yeah, Denver ran the ball like 40 times last week. So, I mean, in games where I think the Broncos are going to be down by a couple touchdowns, like last week, I think I'll have some exposure to Phillip Lindsay, but not, not in this game where I could see like a 14 to 10 final. I just, I don't have any interest. All right. Cowboys saints. It's the, it's the night game. So I'm just curious. Do you think that uh, the Cowboys just go in there and roll over Teddy B or you think the saints at home kind of uh, rally around and put up another surprising win? Cause I think everybody was surprised last week that they went into Seattle and came out with a W. I don't think a lot of people thought that was possible. So can that carry over? And will the Cowboys finally get punched in the mouth? I'm of the mind, Chris, that I feel like the Cowboys are hitting everybody at the right time. It's like they're hitting Eli uh, Manning Giants. They're yeah. hitting, you know, the Dolphins. Dolphins. They're, hitting, they're hitting the the Saints without Drew Brees. I yeah. feel like this is like the perfect season for them. And then they're going to get in the playoffs and they're going to get like – checked yeah <laughs> you know? it's very possible yeah because the schedule is weak i mean they're gonna have the eagles soon too dealing with some injuries there as well i mean the division obviously is it's not very good um but yeah i i think that i do think they'll win the game i, I think the saints will be competitive but teddy bridgewater is gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive than what he was last week and they fell into we talked about the the fumble a couple of special teams plays. They fell into a win last week. They were up. They were able to rely on their defense. And if there was a couple more minutes left in that game, I mean, they may have blown it because the second half wasn't as strong. So I, I think Dallas wins the game. I'm from a DFS standpoint. I do. Uh, I do like Dak. I think, you know, just what I've seen from their offense, maybe they change it a little bit, but they've been throwing the ball a ton. Like they, they've just been, I know the opponents haven't been good, but you would think that maybe they'd lean on Zeke or Pollard a little bit. And I know they did last week, but Dak has been really chucking it and he's been efficient. So I, I do like him and the Cowboys to go in and get a win. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a competitive game and you got to be pretty, um, you know, excited if you're a, Alvin Kamara owner, he had a lot of work. Last, like he is the most he ever played in a game. He he touched the ball a ton. He caught like I think ten passes. He's going to be really involved in the offense going forward. Yeah. All right. It's that time again. It's time to find the end zone here on the pre-snap. Now again, last week, uh, my wide receiver was Mike Evans. I'd say that worked out. Aaron Jones gave me uh, two touchdowns as well. Uh, Chris Meady got on the board with a touchdown as well. So we are doing quite well here, and we want to remind everybody. This is the episode part where you get to win some merch. So if you like some free stuff, it's time to retweet this segment out there and win some free stuff because uh, either I or Chris Meany will be your champion if you get selected. And everybody likes a free hat. I mean, come on. Let's let's not pretend like we don't like free hats. Everybody (laughs) likes free hats and T-shirts and stuff like that. That's why they made cannons that shoot t-shirts okay that's the whole point so exactly let's get after it this week so i'm gonna give you the board first here chris meany for wide receiver who are you going for your touchdown this week week four in the nfl i am gonna go to la in a game that i want to attack and i'm gonna take cooper cup cooper Ah. cup is jared goff's favorite target in the red zone he's gonna hook up with him again this week all right so there you go you know what we're gonna I think we're going to both pass on Keenan Allen because it's just too easy. I think yeah, this week it's like, that's just not fair. So we're not going to do that, but I'm going to take one. It's kind of easy too. And I don't care. It's Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett's going to have another touchdown against Arizona. Who knows? Maybe more than one. All I know is that the value is just sick right now. So go out there and run and get Tyler Lockett in all your lineups. That's my wide receiver. I'll go first with RB and it's my boy, big D playing against the Falcons. Derek Henry. Nobody can tackle in Atlanta. And Derrick Henry is the last human being on the planet you want to try to tackle if your heart isn't in it. So I think this guy gets in the end zone as well. So that's my running back, Chris Meany, who's your RB to go TD. So I'm really going to risk it. And I know people, whoever I get is going to be probably bummed. Why did you do this? Why did you pick this guy? What you said, Joe, I was already in on him, but what you said, how he's playing for his job. Chris Carson is playing for his job it. this week. Going up against a weak secondary, a weak run defense in Arizona. He's going to find the end zone. Hang on to that football, Chris Carson, and get that job back. I love it. Love it. There you go. So hopefully we'll win some more people some merch. Again, retweet this segment and make sure you are downloading and using that Line Star app uh, over there. The best optimizer in the business. All the tools, all the stats, all the matchups, everything you need to be successful. So if you enjoyed the pre-snap, make sure you go over and subscribe and give us five stars because we're awesome and we're fun and we win you money. And tomorrow, 
Uh, again, Friday comes out the wagering, uh, wagering show with myself and Mike Randall. So make sure you check that out as well. If you're going to make some uh, little wagers on some of the football games, we got you covered there. Uh, five out of six on the upset special. I'd say that's pretty good between uh, for the first three weeks. We'll see if we can keep the mojo going. And uh, obviously we're going to do our best to do that. So that'll do it for us here. You can follow Chris Meany. Uh, check out all his work at The Athletic. And of course, uh, you can follow him on the Twitter machine at Chris Meany. You can follow me at Joe Pizapia17. Again, that'll do it for us. Follow Linestar at Linestar app. There's nothing left to do now except set down. Wait. You've been listening to the Pre Snap Podcast, brought to you by Linestar. Hit subscribe, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Chris Meany.